Alejandro Alvarado came in as a big surprise for the U.S. Men's National Team U20s as one of the top performers of the U.S. Men's National Team U20 squad that qualified to the Olympics. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to an exclusive interview that I'm very much excited about, Alejandro Alvarado. Many of you have asked questions about him. It's much easier to have him talk about it himself. Today, we're going to talk about the LA Galaxy Academy, the U.S. Men's National Team U20s qualifying his preferred role, and his current team, Vizela, that plays at Liga NOS in Portugal. We're going to learn much more about Alejandro today, but before we start, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of content and other content as well about U.S. soccer. You never know, you might enjoy it, all right? I will not be asking this during the interview, so make sure to hit that like button. And now, let's play the intro and let's bring in Alejandro Alvarado from Vizela. Okay, everyone asked here in the channel. So, Alejandro, first, before I start anything, how are you doing today? Doing fine. I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing great. And I just wanted to make a full disclosure here, um, just, just to open up. So, when I asked them which players they wanted here in the channel, it was you and Diego Luna that I heard the most of, for many reasons. Good performances. And they want to know more about you because there's not much information about you. You kind of came out of nowhere in this U20 tournament. You weren't in any camp before. And then you show up, you take the starting job, have amazing performances and help the United States return to the Olympics. So let's talk a little bit about that before we start talking about you. We're going to go through your academy days in the LA Galaxy, how you went to Portugal. There's a lot to talk about. Let's start the U20s right here. You weren't in any camp before, right? Correct. So, um, yeah, um, it all started... Back in um, the first tournament was Nations League, correct? And um, I was still in Vizela. So it was early days in Vizela. It was Revelations Cup. From, Revelations Cup. Revelations Cup. Okay, Revelations Cup. And from there on, um, I had some chats with Mikey um, throughout the season with Vizela. And every chat, you know, we wanted to be able to get me to a camp um, that they were having. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't have my residence card. So I wasn't able to travel and head out to any of the camps. So I built a strong relationship through the phone with uh, Mikey. He was keeping up with my games. And luckily, you know, I got my residence card the last game of the season. So I was able to head back home for two weeks. And I talked to Mikey and he told me, look, you know, um, we want to call you up to Honduras. Um, and I said, 100%, I'm in. I was uh, committed. And I got uh, on the flight to Honduras and I actually met with, uh, with Mauricio Cuevas, uh, which is one of my close friends, Jay Lenio and Marcus Rufanis at the airport. So, you know, already I was already building that bond and getting back to those days with, uh, with my guys. And I landed in Honduras and honestly, it couldn't have gone better. The, the way the teammates, everyone, the coaching staff teammates welcomed me. And, you know, it was my first camp. So I was a little nervous here and there. Um, but just the way everyone welcomed me and everyone uh, treated me was amazing. So to begin with, it just it all went straight forward. And you mentioned Cuevas, Marcus, and Jalen Neal. They, they all played with you in the Galaxy Academy. You guys knew each other from childhood? Yeah, yeah, from U14, U15, U16, U19 um, level. And even at G2, uh, Galaxy 2 in the USL. So we had a good relationship and, you know, we separated ways, but whenever we're with, we're together, it just feels like we've never been apart uh, that long. Okay. So w from what I understood there, um, Coach Vadas and U.S. soccer in general, they were already, they wanted to call you in, in previous camps. It was just the visa with Portugal in Portugal that couldn't really release. You couldn't leave the country at that time. So, yeah, I guess it was just um, bad luck for that moment that you were not in camp before. Now, with that said, one thing I noticed, and I'm going to tell you, I don't know how much you follow closely. And I talked to Paxton Aronson last week, I believe. And the interview is going to be out with him probably right after you. And he mentioned, and we talked about how the Revelations Cup, our team, and he agreed, it looked very disjointed the first time our team played together. Extremely disjointed. 
And then they had many camps that I'm sure you know of. And then we had the CONCACAF championship that you went to. Um, he said part of the disjointment was because a lot of the players never played together. Did you in any moment feel that way when you were in camp? Because it was the first time you were playing with many of these guys. Did it take you a little bit to adjust or was that quick? Yeah, so so what actually helped me was the two weeks we had before um mm. the training sessions and you know we had some scrimmages um there uh and that really helped me get together you know and figure out how we, everyone plays and they could see how i play you know my style and if i could fit in or not and i i knew some players already like marcus Jalen, i knew paxton um i've heard of a lot of players that were that were in this team um as well as Caden clark and yeah i mean i i didn't really show as much um to fit in so it was kind of it was kind of perfect you know there wasn't really on the field or off the field stuff which i struggled in it was just if i went back to my regular club and i was there with them throughout the whole process that's actually what i what i told nike i was like it, it feels like i was there throughout the whole camps you know like if i, I it wasn't my first camp um so it actually i actually went really well and i didn't really have any problems on the field with anyone Mm -hmm. Were there any players, you, you mentioned the LA Galaxy boys, right? Obviously, you guys been friends since childhood, you knew each other. Were there any players that you were closer to besides them, obviously? Yeah, so so there was um, the Philly boys for sure. Um, Jack, Paxton, Quinn, uh, BC, Brandon, um, which we were, you know, a little closer. But I feel like with everyone, mostly spending a whole month in a hotel, you're going to be close with everyone. So, you know, you got to get to know everyone. And I don't know, man, you can, you can, you can stay <laughs> in the house with a family and we can have a lot of fights. <laughs> no, for sure. For sure. No, I agree. But no, I mean, yeah, like I said, it's just, it felt like everyone was together. You know, it's like the family that we, we called the, in between the tournament, which helped us get through. So, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like with everyone, with Nico and uh, the young, the young guys as well that were there, um, I feel like it was all, it was all um, very good. Now, help me understand one thing here. We saw the United States play mostly. It was mostly a four-three-three. Sometimes it looked like a four-two-three-one. Um, Paxton was essentially the false nine for the most part. We saw you play the six. We saw you play the eight. We saw you attack a little bit more, stay more in the buildup. How would you describe Coach Vada's system, um, the way he plays? Was it a high-pressing system? How would you describe from what you've seen in practice and the execution in-game from this team? How, how would you describe this to a soccer fan? Yeah, so the formation was clear from the start. It's going to be a 4-3-3. Um, and yeah, like what you said, Paxton as a false nine. That was pretty much the, the go-to. And in terms of pressing... It was, we, we press all the time, you know, and our press was the wingers going to the center backs and the midfielders kind of reading when to step to the fullbacks. Um, and off the build out, we wanted to build out every single time. You know, we weren't scared, the conditions of the field, our mindset was build out, be comfortable, be calm, be cool, and, you know, be us and play the way we play, the way we train and be confident in what we could do. So, and the main focus was on the ball you could lose it you could try to dribble and lose the ball but when you it's time to defend you go out 100 you try to get that ball back so he really you know said it, it doesn't i don't really care if you lose the ball as long as you give me 100 defensively and your reactions are are the most important thing in the game and i think that really helped us because we were we were free on the ball and we felt confident and once we lost the ball We, we got it right back, um, like against Honduras. That really helped us. The Honduras couldn't get out of their own half in like the first 25 minutes because of our reaction and on the key concepts that we worked on. And I think that was the major concept that he really told us to do and focus on, you know, our reactions off the ball. That is very nice to hear an American coach encouraging the players to be creative right no not many instructions on the ball let the players figure out on their own when in possession obviously there are instructions you, you know what i mean right um but more freedom on the ball and then defensively yeah you need to be very compact very well organized and well-rounded to be an effective defending team but 
we're going to go back a little bit to this topic because I do want to talk about you as a player, about position. But before we get to that, you are a dual national um, Mexican-American, like many soccer players in the United States nowadays. And I've had many here in the channel. I'm not going to go on and ask you which national team you want to play for, which one do you dream of playing for? Because it's probably a decision that you still have to make. If not, you'll make it one day very soon. You are provisionally cap tied to the United States, if I'm not mistaken, with this tournament. You played an official tournament. So my question to you is completely different from this. Culturally, when you grew up, uh, is your is your household much more of a Mexican culture um, outside of your household? How would you define you growing up as a child? Which leagues did you watch the most? Liga MX, um, MLS, Premier League. Talk a little bit about yourself growing up. I would say. Yeah, so both my my parents are Mexican. Um, they're both from Mexico. Uh, so yeah, the culture growing up is uh, a Mexican culture. Um, the first language I spoke was, was Spanish. It's my first uh, language. And yeah, the culture was Mexican, Sunday league um, with my dad watching his games play. So yeah, it's more of a Mexican culture. Um, and I mean, I lived in the U.S. 18 years. So there's also an American culture there for sure, you know. But growing up as a kid, it was more of a Mexican culture. Uh, watching Liga MX games with uh, my dad's favorite teams um, back, you know, in Mexico. Um, and growing up throughout the years, that's when I started getting to the MLS, being with the Galaxy, um, learning more about the MLS and growing into that American culture, for sure. So, I, I mean, I feel as much as an American as a Mexican, um, you could say. So, um, and like you said, not to get into the, the um, about choosing Mexico or the U.S., um, but right now I'm 100% focused on the U.S., right, for this upcoming mm -hmm. World Cup. Hopefully everything goes good. Um, gotta gotta earn a spot for sure. You know, there's, the job is not done, and we have to compete. So, um, yeah. So it's just, it's it's a tough decision, but we we'll, we will get there one day. Like you said, it's very early to make a choice like that. Mm -hmm. um, we just still have a lot of experience to go through and a lot of things to experience. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's also why I didn't really ask about national team. Obviously, right now, your project is more towards the United States. You just qualified to the U-20 World Cup, as you said. That's next year in Indonesia. And then the Olympics in 2024. But you got plenty of time um, to make the decision for whatever opportunities um, arise. And and I, I also grew up on the Brazilian. I actually grew up a good part of my life in Brazil. Right. A little bit different from you. You grew up actually here in a Mexican household. Uh, I grew up mostly in Brazil. I'd say uh, the first 15 years of my life, I lived 11 in Brazil. Uh, right. And then obviously now I've lived more in the United States than in Brazil. Um, but it's somewhat similar. It's kind of like divided. The more you live here in the U.S., you learn more about MLS. But before you get to that point, all you talk about in home, in my case, is the Brasileirão. In your case, with your dad, it was probably Liga MX, L3. Um, but yeah, growing up in the U.S., there's that. And also you see other, like Mauricio Cuevas is also Mexican-American. And he was with the United States as well, right? He grew up here in the U.S., similar to you. I'm sure you two can relate to that. But yeah, not going to stay much on this topic. There's not much more to discuss in terms of that. Um, I wanted to go a little bit back to the U20s because you played one game for Vizela last season towards the end and I tried to follow Vizela I was following mostly because Alex Mendez was there right he was playing and then we saw that you played too and um, we started to look more into you but I wasn't able to watch much of you at the club level right uh, it's also not very easy to access Liga NOS here so my question to you is this. We saw you play the six. We saw you play the eight. We saw you play a little bit more of an advanced eight at one point, which kind of looked like almost an attacking midfielder 10. What's your position? What's your actual position? Where do you normally play, or at least at the club level, or where you're more comfortable with? Yeah, so I'm a natural eight. Um, I've been an eight basically since, you know, since I was little. And I... I consider myself a player where it doesn't really matter where you play me, but I'm going to give it 100%, you know? So I will try to make it look good, you know, if you put me left wing, striker. And um, yeah, like you said, in, in um, qualifiers, I played the six, the eight, and the 10. 
and it's just it's kind of similar all the midfield spots so you know you kind of relate to the game you understand all the concepts a little things change but it's basically almost all the same thing but uh, i do consider myself more of a i like to attack i like to defend even though it's a lot more running <laughs> but um i do enjoy i do enjoy a little more uh playing the eight um mm -hmm. mostly every system's different you know every system's different so a coach is going to see you in a different way maybe a coach sees you better as a six better as a 10 so it kind of all depends on, on the coach and as a player all you could do is give it your all wherever they think it's best they have the more experience and at the end of the day they're the coach so you do you do what they tell you yeah it also depends on the midfield right the united states plays a three-man midfield you can get a midfield of a dual pivot there's different ways that they can can play are you you looked comfortable in the u20s but are you comfortable on the build-up to going back helping the defense get the ball progressing it forward you're also comfortable playing all the way high up the field in the final third where there's it's it's a lot i, I always say this i don't know if you agree with this I always see it a lot harder to it being a lot harder to attack than it is to defend in soccer, right? Creating someone attack, defending. You see some players sometimes being able to be a good defender, relying on their athletic ability. But when you're trying to create, when you're trying to score goals, it, it you need ability. That's all you have. Um, so what I'm essentially trying to say in the buildup or under pressure in the final third, which one would you pick? Playing as a ten or a six? You said eight. Now I'm picking the extremes. Yeah, so I think there, where I'm more comfortable, would be a little higher up the field, which is uh, something that, you know, I have to work on as well, getting the ball deeper in, in the lines between the center backs and stuff, you know, because that's something that I think I could do, but I need to be way better and way more comfortable and more confident. Um, so I would choose a little higher. Uh, but hopefully yeah. one day I'd say, you know what, I'd rather be a little deeper and get the ball. And that's something I've been working on this this month uh, with Vizela. So um, I think I would choose higher as a 10. <laughs> yeah. So let's go into club now. Let's go into club a little bit. You talked about, you kind of spoiled, spoil, you had a spoiler earlier in the video saying that you were, I, I said, and you went on with it, the LA Galaxy Academy, all the players you played with and... You were in the LA Galaxy Academy and you ended up directly in Vizela, right? Uh, the Portuguese first division. Why did you not end up in MLS or USL even, right? Uh, professionally and you went straight to Europe. Was it a personal decision? Was it something that just happened? Uh, what went on there? Yeah, so firstly, I just uh, want to say, I mean, I was in Galaxy. Um, I left when I was 17, turning 18. I grew as a player. Um, I had a lot of different coaches which helped me and made me the person I am today. You know, that was my home club. The reason of me leaving and, you know, taking the next step was I really didn't have an option. Um, they didn't offer me a contract and um, I had to look elsewhere. You know, I didn't have an option to stay and play in the MLS or stay and play in the USL because uh, there wasn't really an option given to me. So we made the choice to, to leave and look elsewhere. And it was a big leap. You know, we said, Uh, there was opportunities and trials to, to come in, in Portugal, Spain. And we decided to come to Portugal and have a trial here in Vizela, which was where Mendes had just uh, had, had just signed. So it was kind of a coincidence that out of nowhere, I had a trial here in Portugal as well. And yeah, I mean, look, look where we're at now. <laughs> you know, it was, a, it was a good choice. And thankfully, everything went good in, in that trial. So right after the trial, they kept you for last season. And then tell us a little bit more about last season. Um, I'm not going to dive into much there. So you pretty much explained to us you're at the Galaxy. There was no no contract there. Your choice was to go abroad. You had a trial for Vizela, played, and now you're with Vizela. Last season, we didn't see you much with the senior team. How did that go? Were you playing with the U20s and then they brought you to the senior team? How did you get to the senior squad? Because you're 18. So... There's not, I believe, were you the youngest player to come into the field last season in Portugal? I think so. Um, yeah. yeah, I think so. Not Portuguese, so, um, you know, from, mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a little long, but, <laughs> um, no, so, yeah, I arrived in, in December. We got time. We got time. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Uh, so, yeah, I arrived in Vizela, uh, did a trial for two weeks, three weeks. And they were interest, interested from the from the start, from after that first week. So I traveled with the U19s. Um, 
And yeah, they were interested and I felt the love. I actually spent my first, uh, my 18th birthday in Vizela and they got me a cape with the U19 teams as a trialist. So, you know, you kind of felt the difference and that you were wanted and, you know, they kind of convinced you in a certain way. Uh, but yeah, so I did the trial and then the following week I trained with the 23s. And I think that's when the contract negotiations started and it took a while to get the contract sorted. Um, but yeah, so I started with the 23s and then two weeks after that, I actually trained with the first team. I think I did like a week before they had their first game of the season against Sporting Lisbon. So from there on out, from that time, I trained with the first team throughout the whole season. So it was, it was kind of quick. I, it was kind of quick I that just, I made that leap. Can I, sorry to interrupt you for one second. I have a lot of Portuguese friends and you just called them Sporting Lisbon. I heard they get very angry when you call them Sporting Lisbon. <laughs> They just like sportin, right? Sporting. Um, Don't tell me that. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna get some hate for that if I get some Portuguese viewers here, man. I don't know. I, I'm just saying what they tell me, okay? I what apologize in advance. <laughs> yeah, this guy Sportin's not gonna want to hire you there. Okay. They're not gonna sign you, yeah. man. But <laughs> sorry, you were hey, with the U23s. <laughs> yeah, so, so I was with the U23s and then made the leap to the first team in in a month. Um, so it was kind of fast. I was surprised myself. Uh, but yeah, I trained with the first team and I, I just want to thank uh, my Mr. my coach, uh, Mr. Alvaro Pacheco, that gave me the confidence. And I trained with them for that whole month, I think, and for two months. And I was there with them. I didn't get rostered to the games. I was playing with the U19s in that time. So all my, all my games last season were with the U19s and a few with the first team. Um, and I think two months in, I made my debut in the Cup, in the Task Cup. Uh, Portugal. I had my first 45 minutes, and it was different. It was uh, it was different. You know, it was more nerves, and uh, it was way different compared to the other games I had. And yeah, from there on now, it was just continuing training with the first team, getting better day by day, learning, and you know, watching the other players that I have next to me that are very experienced, underrated. You know, not really, not many people know about them, but they're they're very good, and I learned a lot from them. Um, and from my mister as well that uh, gave me the confidence and showed me, you know, certain ways and the system. And and what I could say is that I really got better in my intensity. Coming here and training every day, the intensity is way higher. And that's something that really stuck out to me. And I had to adapt. I had to get better. I had to train and, you know, try to be the best of the best I can be. And um, yeah, I mean, throughout the whole season, it went good. I kind of... Uh, trying to do my best and uh, Mr. Alaro Pacheco really liked me. So I, I got the chance to start against Braga 40, uh, for 40, for 56 minutes, I think I played in that game. And another nerve wracking game before the game, I remember thinking like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm actually starting against the top five team and a very good team. And the way I got that chance was a lot of players had uh, yellow cards. So it was out of nowhere, a week before I was playing with the U19s and then the week of training, I was in the starting 11, ready to start against Braga. So thankfully everything went good. I got a yellow that game, but it's okay. <laughs> well, at least now if you, when you play this season, because we are recording this before the season starts, regardless of when you're, anyone's watching this or when it's out, this is recorded before the first game of the season. Uh, we, are you going to be nervous once you get in the field again? To be honest or with you, <laughs> I don't I don't want to sound cocky or you know I'm not I'm not that type of person or player uh but I actually feel a lot more confident and a lot better than I, than I was last season and in terms on and off the field I feel like I've matured in in many ways um as a player and as a person um so I think now I mean there's always going to be nerves um anyone that says that there's no nerves I mean maybe only Messi or Ronaldo could say that but uh but yeah, there's going to be nerves, but I don't think as much as my first professional debut, which that one was a lot different than uh, Braga. Braga, I was a little nervous, but I was when, when game time came, I was locked in, focused, and everything went the way I planned. Um, so hopefully this season is the same. Is this your first interview? Um, YouTube interview, yes. I guess so I had... Nervous? Are you nervous? Uh, nervous. No. Not really, not really. Off the field, you know, interviews, I kind of, I kind of, the way I look at it is just have a chat, you know, just have a chat, have a good time, enjoy, and yeah, just, just be myself. Um, and so I don't really find it as hard, you know, 
Um, um, much. Alejandro, uh, what about Alex? Alex Mendes? Are you guys close during the team? Has he helped? I mean, he's also also American, just like you. So, um, any you guys close at all? Yeah, yeah, very close. When once I got here, I actually stayed at his at his house for my first trials or at his apartment um, when I was trialing here. Uh, getting to the first team, he really helped me, which I'm really grateful for, and I I let him know. And you know, even now, even now in preseason, we're actually roommates um, for the for the preseason. And yeah, I think we're close. My birthday was this Friday, um, so we actually went Happy out to birthday. dinner. <laughs> Thank you. We went out to dinner, had something to eat, and it, he's actually helped me made a this European, you know, um, adaptation way better. And as well as uh, got a shout out my fellow Americans, uh, Ulises Yanis and Kobe Hernandez. I don't know if you heard of them. They've actually I'm really close yeah. to them as well, and they've helped me uh, since last year. And you know I'm really close to them, so they helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, what was I gonna say? You talked about briefly about it. you said Mister. That caught my attention because that's how you call coaches in Portugal, right? Yeah, because yeah. I know Flamengo in Brazil, they had Jorge Jesus and he was called Mister. And uh, I noticed that Portuguese coaches are called just to make that clear to the American viewers because you're like our Mister. Uh, they're like Mister, yeah, you're yeah. just talking about the manager, the coach of the team. <laughs> the coach. Uh, Correct, yeah. You talked about intensity. Uh, when you're talking about intensity, is it because it's a transition from the U.S. to Portugal? Or did you say that more because you went from the, the, the youth level to the senior level where you start to play against grown men and, and obviously they'll be stronger, faster, sharper. Was the transition of intensity meant towards age or you meant like Portugal is a little bit tougher right now, which I can give you my opinion on it, but that's not really relevant. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I think the level is higher. I'm not going to miscredit, you know, uh, MLS or USL. Um, I actually got to play a season in the USL. I never mm -hmm. got the chance to even train with the MLS team, so I can't really give my opinion on that. Um, but I could give my opinion here in Portugal. And the intensity is way higher, the level is way higher, and every game is, you know, it's a must win. And a tie is sometimes a win, or a tie is sometimes a, a loss. So every game is played, like, your, your life is on the line, basically. And that's something I noticed, or, you know, I, I lived through last season with some games that I was rostered in. And everyone, the whole mood changes. If you win, everyone's excited, happy. And if you lose, it's a long bush ride home. Um, so I think the intensity as well in the training sessions, it's so much higher um, in the rondos and in, in the 10v10s. And here in Bizella, we actually, uh, the training sessions are shorter, but they're way harder. So it's, uh, it's a good mix. And yeah, I mean, the games, you have to be fast. You have to be, your first touch always has to, has to be good. If you have a bad first touch, you already lost the ball. So it was, a, I had to adapt really quick and thankfully I did. And now I feel way, like I said, way more mature, confident on the ball and hopefully we can make it another good season. Yeah, I, I, as someone that lives in Brazil too, I do know that in South America and in Europe, there's much more, there's a larger connection of the club with the community too. That's one of the reasons why every loss or every win matters so much more. Right, it affects the whole community. It's not just the team, and and I, yeah, sure in the U.S. too. There's no way a Sounders fan is happy when the Sounders loses, but the connection with the city, with the community, is not as strong and tight as it is in Europe and South America. I, I don't know much about African Asia. I haven't been there. I don't know. I don't have many friends from, so I don't know much. But I have a lot of friends in Europe, and I lived in South America. So and, and Mexico too. Mexico too. The the connection to the community is much larger. Um, I was in Mexico in July and I, I got a feel I, I was in Mexico and I was like, the soccer culture is so similar to Brazil. I was like, it's so similar. Um, you related to it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's so similar to soccer culture. I, I can totally understand when I was talking to a bunch of people there. I visited the the Stadio Azteca. Uh, but but yeah, just to wrap things up here, because this video is being recorded before the season starts, you sort of finished preseason right now by the time we're recording. Uh, you're going into the season. So just two quick questions. One is, what is your expectation this season with Vizela or what you want to accomplish, right? You got your first cap last season. Now I'm sure you want to get more minutes. 
And during preseason, where are they playing you? Are they playing more you as an eight, a six, like we talked about earlier in the video? And then we'll close the video from there. Yeah, so, I mean, my expectations or goals, um, I just hopefully have more minutes. And I'm not really a person that sets an objective for the, for the season. I kind of go at it day by day and try to get better and try to improve and learn. So I just, yeah, I just want to be better than what I was last year and keep maturing. And like I said, it's, it's very early as well right now. Um, but yeah, I just hopefully have more minutes and just keep working, learning from, from the coach, uh, from my Mister. fellow teammates on the field. Mister. From my mister, from my mister. <laughs> and, you know, from my fellow teammates. And yeah, and off the field as well, mature and keep on growing as a person. So hopefully it's it's another good season, like I said. And for preseason, I've been playing the eight more. So here it's kind of a different system as well. There's not really a six, eight or ten. So all three midfielders are kind of rotating in between the games. So one is kind of central, one is on the right, on the left. And depending how the game's going, we rotate around. So there's not really a certain, you know, six, eight or ten on, on the field. It's kind of all eights, <laughs> I guess you could say in, in a certain way. So it's more roaming, more. you mean. You roam yeah. around more, yeah. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Of course, one is a little deeper, a little, but there's not really yeah. a 10, you could mm -hmm. say. And do you need Portuguese lessons? Eu falo um pouco português. Não não é perfeito. Aqui tá. Se precisar, <laughs> se precisar, eu te ajudo com português. Meu português é muito bom. Eu posso falar português ah, com você quando você quiser. <laughs> yeah, so, so if anyone needs um, Portuguese lessons, I'm available. Not too available. My time is being very restricted, especially with the World Cup coming up. But I am available too. And Spanish and Portuguese are similar. But Alejandro, we'll be following you closely and updating everyone. You are one of the Americans abroad. And we do have a series that covers Americans abroad every Monday. So as I did with Alex last season, I'm going to be following you along too. In Vizela, wishing both of you a great season, obviously. Thank you for taking the time here. We will hope to have you back maybe a year or two from now, whenever you, hopefully you play the U20 World Cup, maybe Olympics, maybe we get something out of that, uh, any of those. But thank you very much, Alejandro. No, thanks so much for having me. And yeah, I appreciate it. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.